Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Well, it's time to discuss Nigeria's inflation that has risen to 32.7% in September 2024, according to NBS. Nigeria's inflation rate rose to 32.70% in September 2024, up from 32.15% in August 2024, marking a 0.55 increase amid ongoing price pressures. Year on year, the inflation rate has surged by 5.98 percentage points compared to September 2023, where it stood at 26.72 percent. Food inflation remains a major driver, reaching 37.77 percent in September 2024, a significant rise from 30.64 percent in the same period last year, with staples like rice, maize and beans contributing to the increase. Month-on-month -month inflation, well, food inflation also rose to 2.64% in September compared to 2.73 or 2.37% in August. And our guest to, you know, just make us unravel all of this is Shegun Shukbiton, who's a principal partner, Woodridge and Scott Consulting. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, man. Thanks for having me. As always. So, we're talking about inflation, 32 Point seven zero percent that is really really high and food inflation is just going off the roof but in your opinion i mean you are into this whole finance thing what are some drivers um i'm sure a lot of people will say pms petrol <laughs> subsidy being gone definitely is a major um a factor to all of this but in your own opinion what are some drivers that has led to us seeing 32.7 zero percent well, I think the, the, the primary driver would be uh, just, it's, it's basically like normalization. Uh, what, what this is saying, it will be interesting to see what happens with the inflation uh, report for this month, you know, which will be released next month, uh, for the month of October. Uh, I suspect that what we'll see is a continued climb. Hmm. Um, so, so you, you recall that when, when we recorded this reduction and then, you know, followed it up uh, a second consecutive month, uh, a lot of us have said this is really driven largely by the reduction in food prices that was driven by the harvest season. Um, you know, we, we, we know that farming has been heavily impacted by the insecurity challenges that we have in the country and all of that, but people are still farming. Um, so August, uh, July, August, September, typically would be what you call the harvest season for the majority of our food crops. Um, that brought prices. Supply was ramped up significantly, which brought food inflation uh, down. So you would notice even during those two reductions, all inflation really didn't move um, significantly. Um, so what we're seeing now is planting season is over. Um, the effect of um, an increase in supply, um, the effect that the increase in supply with the part of prices, you know, has petered out, uh, went back to normal. So we're just seeing, you know, um, a reverting to the to the actual trend in overall inflation within the economy. And you would notice that even in this report, food inflation climbed. You know, so I think the major culprit for this. Um, is food is the fact that food prices have continued their trajectory, and, and I'm sure that anybody that is listening to this would know just from the feel, from the eye test, that this is the reality. Um, food prices are still going up. Mm. Eggs, um, you know, um, in in August, eggs were selling at about five thousand two hundred, mm. five thousand five, depending on where you live. Mm -hmm. Eggs are now six thousand naira. To six thousand two two hundred naira per grain, you know. So, I mean, food, food prices are still climbing at an alarming rate. Now, that is alarming if you think about that. That's just a two-month period. Mm -hmm. You are talking of um, an uh, over 10, 15 percent increase in a two-month period. You know, so it's it's largely driven by food, of course. You know, what you mentioned is also a factor of the fact that PMS prices have climbed. Mm -hmm. um, again, significantly in this period. So we all know uh, the, 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 the problem with uh, petrol prices is that um, it's a hydra-headed monster. When it goes off, it drags everything with it. Because mm -hmm. everybody, it, it's everything in the economy is indexed around it. Everybody uses petrol for one thing or the other. So mm -hmm. even the food seller 
in the market. So maybe transportation costs will go up for mm. her or him personally and for the goods that they're selling. But they also will say to themselves, look, the price of everything else is going to go up, so I must also adjust my prices up yeah. so that I can afford to buy. <laughs> you know, so that multiplier effect mm. of uh, the increase in the price of PMS is also part of what we're seeing. And given the lagging effects and economic uh, indicators, there's no doubt in my mind that we'll continue to see a blind in inflation rates over the next couple of months as a result of the PMS price increases. Oh, wow. That's quite alarming. And, you know, um, speaking about um, food, right, because, you know, you were saying we had planted season and all of that. In fact, there's a report that says about 50% of our agricultural produce, you know, we don't have that at post harvest. So most of them are just being destroyed or, you know, maybe from transportation and um, they get bad on the way. There's just a lot. And of course, there's PMS. But can we also talk about, you know, the exchange rate unif unification? Do you think that also has an effect on the inflation that we're seeing right now? No, well, without a doubt. Um, uh, so so the, we, we must recall that we still import a significant portion of our food uh, need in this country. Uh, we're still spending about 10% um, of our overall um, import bill. It's still going into food. It's still going into food importation. So we're still importing rice. We're still importing vegetable oils. We're still importing some poultry products. <laughs> we still import fish. I mean, mm. um, so whatever happens to, to the exchange rate will definitely have an impact on not just food, actually, but everything else that we consume, as we all know, we're, we're well known and reputed to be a consuming country and an import-dependent uh, country uh, when it comes to the things that we consume. You know, so absolutely, um, we have seen a consistent loss of value of the Naira, you know, through this year, starting from about March, now we're in October. Um, Black market rates are now trending well above 1,700 naira to the, yeah. to, 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 the, to the dollar. You know, even in the official market, we're talking 1,650, 1,660, 1,640 range over the last two weeks. You know, so that will definitely have, um, you know, an inflationary, add inflationary pressures, um, you know, uh, within the economy. So. Again, we, we've always said that the CBN needs to look in this direction if it really wants to curtail inflation instead of the incessant, incessant um, hike in monetary policy rates that seems to be their favorite tool. Hmm. So now, um, how, is it, how do you think this has affected the purchasing power of Nigerians? Because, of course, we know that minimum wage stands at 70,000 naira, even though there's a report that says if you're going to afford a healthy meal of 1,255 naira as of August, and I personally don't think 1,200 naira or 255 naira in this case can afford you a healthy meal. But for a family of four, we're giving that price, we're looking at 150,000 naira a month. A minimum wage stands at 70,000 naira. So, of course, it's nowhere near um, what would afford them food, even before we talk about other things like housing, transportation, um, you know, school fees, and just basic welfare packages that they need to be able to survive in Nigeria. So, with this now, seeing inflation rise to 32.70%, how do you think this would even affect the purchasing power of Nigerians even more? I mean, look, I, the, the purchasing power, um, you know, situation in the country is, is being wiped out. I mean, hmm. look, this is the reality is, um, I don't know whether we should be calling it purchasing power anymore. <laughs> uh, there is no power to purchase anything anymore for the majority of Nigerians. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a conversation that resonates daily everywhere that you go, everywhere you turn, everywhere you look. It's the cost of living that people are talking about. Um, uh, not forgetting the impact of the electricity situation in mm -hmm. all of this. So um, you've got energy crisis in terms of petroleum, in terms of availability and pricing, you know, and availability because as I speak with you, in spite of the supposed deregulation, um, complete liberalization, 
uh, the fact that the, the uh, oil marketers are now free at liberty to buy from Dangote Refinery or any other source that they can find it. Petrol queues, queues are still very much prevalent across the country, um, even though people are buying as high as 1,200, 1,250 at the filling stations, you know, which is completely unbelievable thinking back as to where we were just 15 months ago. Um, so add that to the mix, add to the fact that tariffs um, in electricity, electricity tariffs have also gone significantly up. If you're in band A, um, you know, it, it's crazy. Uh, if you're in band mm. B, it's, it's not so good either. Mm. And if you then fall below band A and B and you start going to C, D and E, you don't even have the electricity, so you have to depend on petrol yeah. to, to power whatever you're doing. You know, it's absolutely crazy what we're seeing. And what this has done is really um, Nigerians don't have the wherewithal to deal with the basic um, uh, things that you must spend money on to survive, just to survive mm. food. What's the component of the average Nigerian's monthly or daily spend? It's food, transportation. And then th this too takes a chunk. It takes about 60% of our spend, food and transportation. And, and that, that's bad enough in itself. Before you then talk about, you know, like you said, uh, school fees, accommodation, yeah. uh, you will wear clothes, you put clothes on your back, you know, and I don't know what it takes. So the money to do these things. Sorry? I said to even go on vacation to save. Like, Absolutely. There's, so many vacation, things no, there's nothing like vacation for, for the majority of Nigerians. Um, mm. You can't even take local vacations. You know what people have started doing? And I'm talking two, three years ago, Nigerians have started developing the, the culture of local vacation. Yeah. You know, going to places like Oluma Rock, going mm -hmm. to, I, I hear, do is no longer, the ranch is no longer in good condition, but people are still going there. You know, um, there are a lot of local places that people now begin to try to visit to look at. If I can't travel abroad because of the crazy ticket prices, at least I can just you know do local local tourism. But all of that is in the mud now because mm. Nigerians are just trying to eat. The, the predominant um, um, uh, issue for the average Nigerian family and people today is just food. It's how to eat. And, uh, and one day, somebody was saying on, uh, in a conversation that I had yesterday that he went to buy food, you know, just from a booker, not a restaurant, just a booker. And one egg was 400 naira, mm -hmm. you know, and you are not supposed to be buying just an egg to put as protein on your food. But even to do that, what is really supposed to be um, like you, you, are, you are poor, that's why you are doing this. It's 400 naira. You know, so it, it's absolutely terrible what we're seeing, um, and something has to give because I don't think that this is sustainable. You know, um, the purchasing power is gone. So what you will eventually see is because purchasing power has been so badly eroded, um, disposable income is gone. It then means that the ripple effect on the overall economic performance is going to be negative, and you're going to see a situation where consumption will be affected. And if consumption is affected, then you're going to have inventory build up, you know, in factories and manufacturing organizations, which will contain investments, and you will eventually see um, a, um, a reduction in economic growth. You mm. know? So we really have to manage the situation carefully so we don't push ourselves uh, potentially into a recession. Ah, oh, my goodness. So in managing this situation carefully as you said what do you think the government's policies do you think they're effective right now with what they're doing i mean the president has said you know what i've heard you loud and clear we're going to try and do stuff and of course um it would yield fruits you know in time to come but as of right now what are what are some um short-term you know things that we can start to implement because this is this is pressure on Nigerians. This is a lot. And we're in a crisis. So what do you think the government needs to be doing at the moment as we wrap it up? I think, I think the biggest thing that the government can do right now um, is to find a way to return subsidies in some way or the other. It's just simply that there's no way around this. Mm. The, the benefits that we're talking about um, um, from subsidy removal and from looting of the exchange rates the World Bank Vice President said in a recent uh, speech he delivered here in Nigeria 
And we should be looking at a window of 10 to 15 years for us to begin to reap the benefits of these reforms. Wow. I mean, everybody will be dead by then, either from old age or just from, <laughs> you know, penury. <laughs> you know, so, so the government needs to react. You, you've got to do something. This is not working. Um, you, you can't kill everybody in the short term because there, there are long-term gains to be to be achieved from your policies so you have to look back and say look this this is not working and i think that the first thing that needs to happen is that the exchange rate needs to be um aggressively attacked and you need to bring that under control you want to find a way to get up back to uh the below one thousand naira to the dollar um mm. uh, threshold because if you do that then prices will follow price of everything will follow and inflation will fall um, so the challenge in that, you know, is how do you achieve that? Uh, do we have the reserves to do this, you know, and all of that? And I say, by the way, by the way, um, even if it means you are going to make some sacrifices with regards to your, you know, foreign reserves, I mean, why are we keeping that money? Uh, mm -hmm. Foreign reserves have grown, you know, I, I think to about thirty-eight billion dollars, you know, over the last couple of couple of months. But look, we we are in a crisis. Mm -hmm. And that is the, actually the exact purpose of your foreign reserves, mm -hmm. is to tie you through bad times. So I think that even if it means dipping into that, just to drag down this exchange rate, that would be an immediate win. And then you can then start talking about all the things that you can do to target inflation mm -hmm. in the immediate term, including providing food subsidies and transportation subsidies, um, um, you know, especially to the transport sector. I mean, these things can be done. It will take some planning. It will take some diligent execution. But it can't happen. We have made a massive, terrible mistake in the way we have tried to approach this reform issue. And I think we can self-correct. Only a foolish person will see that it's going down the wrong route and continue out of arrogance of pride. You've got to say, look, I'm going down the wrong route. Turn back and go and find the correct turn back, back, back along the road that you've been, that you've been coming from. Yeah, I agree with you. And I think, I mean, reforms are good, policies are great, but um, there should be an ease, there should be a transition into that. It's not just saying, this is what we want to do, we know that we're going to get um, dividends later on, but as of right now, people are suffering, people are crying, people are dying. And, you know, there's even a report from the World Bank that says it's going to take about 100 years for us to end poverty. So imagine that. I'm not sure I'm going to be hearing that in another 100 years. But if we were, if we're saying that we want to reform Nigeria, we, it's a good thing. It's something that is commendable, but there should be an ease towards all of it all. Anyways, this is where we have to wrap it up. Shego, it's always a pleasure having you on our program. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Have a wonderful day. You too, sir. All right, so we're sticking with Shegun Shokbiton. He's the principal partner with Ridge and Scott Consulting. And we're just talking about, well, inflation that has gone to 32.70%.